What's up athletes? Today, we're covering five common mistakes that might be leading to tightness, inconsistency, or overall just a lack of power on your serve. That sounded brutal. <laughs> Now, before we get into the video, I wanna note that these tips are mainly for your flat serve and your slice serve. And while they are applicable to your kick serves, there's a whole myriad of another mistakes that come with second serves. So if you want me to cover that in depth in another video, let me know in the comments below. The first mistake you might be making is an overcomplicated toss. See, if your toss is inconsistent, then chances are you're not just having to think about it, you're having to chase it around, whether it's going too forward, too far to the right, to the left, or everywhere in between. And even if you've gotten pretty good at chasing your toss around by now, chances are you're having to adjust your body and your swing to that inconsistent toss position. And those few inches of difference at your contact point lead to several feet of difference by the time it lands on the other side. And that means it's probably going in the net or out. And most importantly, you can't stare into your opponent's soul like Federer is doing here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, once you've mastered your toss, you won't have to think about it. And as a result, it will transform your serving consistency. So the next time you're on court, watch for these things that might be messing with your toss. First, any bending or straightening of your tossing elbow during your tossing motion. Second, any bending or flicking of your wrist. Or number three, you're starting with your toss arm too high, then you jerk it down quickly before throwing the ball up. All of these motions are making your toss tighter and more complicated than they need to be because, well, quite literally, you're adding more moving parts to your tossing motion. So instead, here are a few tips you can apply immediately to simplify your toss and make it more reliable. Number one, hold the toss in your fingers. If it's in your fingertips or in your palms, then you're gonna risk little inconsistencies in how the ball is coming out of your hand. Number two, relax your tossing arm so that your arm is fully extended and drop to the inside of your front leg. And number three, imagine that there are no joints in your arm as you move your tossing arm up. Almost like all of your joints are broken and you're in excruciating <laughs> pain. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a little bit extreme, but you want your wrist and your elbow to be fully extended and completely still and just focus on taking your toss up from the shoulder. Do this motion shoulder flexion and horizontal shoulder abduction. And it combines to look like this. I recommend that you start off by practicing your toss in isolation without your racket or your swing involved. And once you're feeling comfortable with your toss and you're getting it into the proper place consistently, then you can start to add in your full swing. Now, one more key to getting that perfect toss position is understanding what your perfect contact point is. And we actually go super in depth into that in a video series that I'll link in the description below. Unfortunately, on the tennis serve, if you're consistent, but you lack the power and the spin, then advanced opponents are gonna eat it up. All right, that felt really, oh, okay, you're chanting now, it's on. Okay, we're gonna redeem ourselves here. <laughs> ah. All right, I'm gonna cut that out. And that's why the top players are going to load their body fully with a series of techniques. And ultimately, this multiplies the force that they're able to generate and transfer into the ball for maximum power and spin. So let's break it down. There are four ways that you might be lacking the full body load. First is how far away you're rotating from the net with your hips and shoulders. If your body is facing forwards as you toss the ball up, getting power from your hips and trunk will be impossible. And here's a quick drill for you to start feeling that full coil from your hip and your trunk. Now what you'll need for this is a chair. If you're sitting down already, perfect. What you're gonna do first is get to the edge of your seat here. Do you feel the suspense? Why, why would you feel suspense? Because you're sitting at the edge of your seat. Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? That's not funny. <laughs> And from here, you're gonna transform chairs because mine was too small. <laughs> and you're gonna get into your pre-throw position 
like so. You're gonna rotate from your trunk, pull that hitting elbow back until you hit the chair and you should feel a nice stretch in your trunk like so. And you can actually toss the ball up if you're in your office and then ah, HR is gonna come looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, if your tossing arm is dangling out in front of your body, after you release the ball, then your shoulders might be too leveled in your trophy position. You wanna to continue to lift your tossing arm up until your palm is roughly pointing to the sky because this will automatically lift your tossing shoulder. And that creates a powerful shoulder over shoulder acceleration where your hitting arm rises up during your acceleration, helping you generate tremendous upward racketed speed. And finally, you might not be rocking from your back foot onto your front foot and shifting your body weight forward before you start driving through the ground and swinging into contact. Ideally, when you start your service motion before you toss, your weight is onto your back foot. And after you toss, you begin bending and shifting your weight forward until you reach your full trophy position where you're then ready to drive through the ground and get your body up and forward into the court. Now, a player that does this very well is Nick Kyrgios, and we're gonna break him down very soon in this video here, so be watching out for that. Now, a pro tip here is to keep your front toes up off of the ground, because that's gonna force you to have more of your weight onto that back leg. And if you want to, you can have that back leg also slightly bent. From here, as you rock forward onto the balls of your feet, you'll feel your knees starting to bend, and at the same time, lead forward with that left hip and you should get a nice weight shift into the court. And when you combine all three movements, that trunk rotation away, that toss arm extending up and rocking nicely onto the balls of your feet with your weight shifting forward, you should start to see more power on your serve. Now, I know we call this motion a serve, but contrary to its name, we don't wanna literally present the ball on a silver platter to our opponents. We don't, <laughs> we don't need to care about plating here. <laughs> but if you're using mistake number three, the dreaded waiter's tray serve, chances are that's exactly what you're doing. <laughs> okay, I'll stop with the pun. Now, if you have any recordings of your serve, I want you to pull it up right now and check to see if you're doing this. First, after you toss the ball, your strings open up to the sky right above your hitting shoulder. This is usually combined with your hitting arm in a low position. And it's also combined with beverages on your racket. Number four, your legs are still bent when this is happening. And as you swing up to contact, your strings and your palm continue facing up. If you're doing any of these, then you've likely got the way to straight serve. And from here, through contact, players are usually gonna use some sort of pushing motion from their tricep or their shoulder. Overall, leading to that feeling of tightness and like you're arming your serves too much. Now, if you found yourself doing exactly what I described here, then we've made a full five day serve power challenge, completely free, that we've linked in the description below. So go check that out right after this video. It's gonna completely transform your serve and I promise you'll love it. And we have many more drills in that series that are gonna help you with conquering all of these mistakes. But first, for this video, I want you to try this drill sequence out. Now, this drill is a little something we like to call the waiter's tray fixer serve drill. That's its official name. Now you can do this even at home. The first thing I want you to do is get into your pre-throw position with your racket tip pointing up to the sky. Now shake your arm a little bit and that's gonna ensure it's relaxed. And from here, I want you to drive through the ground and rotate your hip forward while keeping your arm relaxed. And what you should notice is that your racket is gonna naturally want to flip back like this. If you really wanna feel that flipping action, then you can get two rackets in your hand. And from here, we've got an added weight. Try the same thing, rotate your hips forward and just relax your arm. And you should notice that the motions, two motions, external shoulder rotation and forearm supination are happening here. Okay, this is my best attempt at the double stack serve. Eh. What, extra power, let's go. That was <laughs> awesome. Okay, don't try that at home. <laughs> now, even after you've done it all, you've done the load, you've done the racket drop, you're putting tons of effort into each serve. Well, there's still a chance that 
you're not getting as much power and heaviness as you could because it's not just about how much force you're generating, it's about how well you're transferring that force into your racket at contact. And fixing mistake number four, over rotation is the key to that. You see, if you were really transferring the force into your racket head, then you could technically talk and be relaxed while you serve. You see, initially rotating your hip and your trunk helps you generate power. It's a critical part of every serve, even a powerful and heavy kick serve. But after a certain point, if your torso continues to rotate into the net, then your contact ends up becoming compromised because your hitting arm ends up lagging too far behind your body and becomes unstable at contact. And you can imagine that all the power is still pulled down at your hip and your trunk instead of having transferred into your hitting arm and racket. Remember how you accelerate a whip is by accelerating and then decelerating the butt because that's how the tail end is able to release and snap into its victim. <laughs> and as a side note, this is one of the things that makes the serve so difficult. The very things that help our serves the most, like the hip rotation, can end up becoming our biggest hindrances if we overdo them. Now, one of the best ways for you to learn how to prevent over rotation if your chest and your hip is facing the net is to learn how to generate power with internal shoulder rotation, like so. Now, the last mistake, and perhaps the most important, is all about your response to mistakes. Specifically, an overly negative response can start to hinder our performance on the court. I mean, we've all had that moment where we miss our serve, and then the negative self-talk and doubt starts to kick in. You didn't just miss your serve, Dietrich. You missed your mark in life. You're a failure, a failure, a failure, a failure. <laughs> Most players continue this negative self-talk throughout the set and stay frustrated, which leads to tightness and eventually just pushing the serve in. But here's the thing, even at the highest levels of tennis, pros can have their moments of frustration, but the best players are able to forget about those mistakes quicker than others. I mean, those misses never feel good, but they're almost an unavoidable part of tennis. So how do we respond with a calm, cool, and collected manner while staying confident in ourselves during our matches? The best way I've heard the solution put is by author Tim Ferriss. There's a self-acceptance, which is a macro, I don't need to change anything. And then there's a self-acceptance, which is really just truthfully accepting whatever you're experiencing at the moment as what is happening as opposed what to is? saying i don't want to feel angry i don't want yeah. to feel angry and like fighting and fighting and fighting and tugging yourself in multiple directions applying this to tennis whenever you're actually at the line about to serve or you're in a match you want to be calm and what's helped me personally is to focus on deep breathing as I step up to the line and to focus on the positive result that I'm trying to achieve rather than trying to avoid the negative or in this case, a specific mistake. And then in the big picture, taking a step back, I'll make adjustments to my training because at the end of the day, your performance on court or in a match is the buildup of your learning and practice off and on the court. Now, this requires for you to have a training system that you can trust in and follow regardless of the emotional highs and lows that we all go through. And that's why we've put together our brand new five-day serve power challenge. It's completely free to join and we have one simple promise. If you follow the instructions and drills within our brand new masterclass for 20 minutes each day, you'll start noticing massive results on your serve while fixing the biggest serve bad habits that you might be falling victim to. So go join right now while it's still free by clicking the first link in the description below. And as always athletes, until next time, go out and train hard. I'll see you in the next video.